Jag genomgick min skidutbildning på ett av Sveriges alpina skidgymnasium. Visste du att en tredjedel av mina klasskamrater drabbades av en allvarlig knäskada under gymnasietiden? Du vill väl inte bli en av dem? Knee injuries are the most common injuries in alpine skiing in the age group 15 to 20 years old. A serious knee injury such as an ACL injury often means that you can never achieve what you want in terms of becoming a truly successful alpine skier. And an ACL injury can also lead to further damage in the knee joint and invariably force the skier to give up a skiing career. It's therefore important to try to prevent these serious knee injuries. The knee joint is the part enclosed by the body's longest lever arms, the thigh bone and shin bone. This means that the knee joint is exposed to very great forces. The knee joint consists of two menisci, two collateral ligaments, as well as the anterior and posterior cruciate ligament. The joint is surrounded by muscles. All these structures help to stabilize the knee joint and, for example, the ACL serves to prevent the shin bone from sliding forward in relation to the thigh bone. In extreme situations where the load on the knee joint becomes very great, especially in rotating parts, it renders even the strong thigh muscles incapable of withstanding the strain. This can lead to a rupture of the ACL. Here you can see how the skier is losing balance, falls and suffers an ACL injury to her left knee. med höga fysiska krav och ständigt varierande yttre förhållanden gör alpin tävlingsbedåkning till en av våra mest komplexa idrotter. Resultatet från vår forskning har visat att risken är högre att drabbas av en allvarlig skada i vänster ben jämfört med höger. Och det unika med alpin tävlingsidrott är att du ska klara av att svänga lika bra till höger som till vänster sida vilket gör att du behöver ha samma fysiska krav på vänster som höger kroppshalva. För att hålla koll på om just du har en skillnad mellan höger och vänster kroppshalva har vi utvecklat olika testverktyg. Det är viktigt att du regelbundet använder av dessa testverktyg för att hålla koll på om din träning gör att du kan prestera lika bra svängar åt höger som åt vänster. Samt att du kommer att klara det bättre om du hamnar i utsatta positioner. In the exercise single leg hop You're standing on one leg, holding your hands behind your back. Jump straight ahead as far as you can and land on the same leg. Remember that it's important to land with well-controlled balance and your knee joint straight over your foot. Jump on both the left and the right leg. Make a note if you perform a better jump with one leg than with the other. In the exercise square hop, you're standing on one leg in the square. Jump in and out, either clockwise or counterclockwise, as many times as you can for 30 seconds. Jump on both the left and right leg. Make a note if you perform a better jump with one leg than the other. In the squat exercise, you're standing on a step or block. Do as many squats as you can on the left and the right leg. Remember to keep your knee straight over your foot. Make a note if you perform this exercise better with one leg than the other. In this exercise, called the shuffle, you ski long turns in easy terrain, where you constantly move your feet back and forth when skiing. If you can keep your feet moving throughout the entire turn, you know that you've found a good middle position over the skis. If the movement of your feet stops at any part of the turn, you're probably in some sort of imbalance that makes it impossible to move your feet back and forth correctly. If you lean too far back in your position, it will be difficult to correct your movements. 
Remember to have a relaxed upper body with your arms slightly forward and outward and all your movements controlled by your legs and feet. Try to find out what part of the turn that you have the most difficulty in keeping your feet moving and what it can depend on. Crisscross the ski back and forth, balancing on one ski while turning the other ski across the ski that you balance on. This could be done while skiing straight ahead or diagonally across the slope. You're standing on the ski's inside edge while the other ski is above ground crossing back and forth. This exercise should be performed with a relaxed and balanced torso, pointing slightly in the downhill line. If you have a good balance with your hips over your feet, hips in the center, you should be able to do this exercise in both directions where the movements, coordination and balance are controlled by the lower body and your legs. Remember to have a relaxed upper body, keeping your arms slightly forward and outward and all your movements coming from your legs and feet. Try to achieve a good balance and coordination on both sides by finding a favorable position over the skis. The correction of your body and legs should be as easy in both directions. In this exercise, you transfer weight to the outer ski and lift the inner ski through the turn. It can be done in both short and long turns, in easy or intermediate terrain. This exercise should be performed with a relaxed and balanced torso, pointing slightly in the downhill line. If you have a good balance with the hips over your feet, hips in the center, it should be possible to perform the exercise both ways, in which movements, coordination and balance are controlled by the lower body and your legs. Remember to have a relaxed upper body with your arms slightly forward and outward, with the inner ski lifted from the snow. Try to achieve as good balance and coordination on both sides by finding a favorable position over the skis. A confident skier makes sure that he or she is well trained and can perform just as safely turns on the left as well as on the right leg. Test continuously to make sure that you can perform equally on both legs.